Uh, so you want to talk about the export import bank there, Halberstam? Oh, definitely. So, so the moderates from both parties are banding together to save the nation this week. 42 Republicans have joined 176 Democrats in signing a discharge petition, which will force the XM reauthorization bill to the floor against the wishes of the House, House Financial Services Committee, Jeb Henserling. Um, this is a parliamentary procedure that's not often used, so it must be important. Well, it's certainly important to someone. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> No, seriously, the, the XM bank CEO's name is Hoke Berg. Berg, Berg. The Jew! Berg. The Jew! The Jew! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know on TRS we say that George Kylan is dead, but I think he had it pretty pretty well spot on when he said that the word bipartisan usually means that some larger than usual deception is being carried out. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I miss George Carlin. But, yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, you know, I used to think, oh, look, they're working together. This is the way our country's supposed to work. That point of view is so fucking dildo now. Um, it, right, it's, it's like you, you like I hear so much about like the polarization of the country, and it's like yes, good people are reacting against the fucking insanity of the, these crazy radicals. Good, let's have let's have some pushback here. But it's like whenever there's something, whenever, you know, whenever the, they're cooperating, it's like it basically just means Republicans have acquiesced to Democrats. Like I think you had a like the, the numbers you just cited there. It was nearly like three Democrats to one Republican. It's, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, that's the politics surrounding this particular piece of ed legislation are really funny because the, when Obama was running, he called the Export Import Bank, and I quote, little more than a fund for corporate welfare. This is something that a lot of Democrats have railed against in order to keep their progressive street cred up. But now that the rubber's about to hit the road on actually getting rid of it, the entire Democrat establishment is suddenly supporting it. But yet you'll hear not one. Shit. Yeah, you'll hear not one word in the media about that. Not one word. Um, nope. But if it had been, but if it had been a Republican that had gone back on something that big, uh, they would have made a big deal about it. But we know who this is. We all know who this export import bank is going to be. The Jew. Yeah, I mean, listen to Hiram. The Jews are the smart. That's why they own everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, let's. Yeah, Go ahead. Proponents of, of the of the XM Bank say that it's not a corporate giveaway because the money is paid back, and it seems like it does have a pretty good record of repayment as far as the loans and guarantees that they. But it's the make. but it's the risk. It's you're putting the risk on the government, and it's something you're yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, you got to fucking Low sell. You're selling them. Yeah. Low yeah. cost guaranteed financing to your to your fucking customers in foreign countries and. A government entity assumes all the risk of the deal. The, yeah. The, only someone who doesn't know anything about business would say that that's not something that's extremely fucking valuable. Yeah. And they also talk about how like small and mid-sized companies are the primary beneficiaries of this. But it's fucking Boeing. It's GE. It's fucking Caterpillar. Yeah. Eli Lilly. Fucking Procter and Gamble. It's all the big guys out there. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's it's so, and this has been around since FDR. You said that, right? Yeah, it was established by executive order under FDR as part. And was of there the, a reason for this? There, there's a reason for this um, that we need to have exports. You know, people who purchase exports have the loans guaranteed. What what's the what what's the? Well, I I mean. I don't know about when it originally started, but the argument now, and there is, this is true, um, the argument that proponents of XM make is that other countries either have now or will establish similar type entities to finance these big international deals and, and make sure... So basically one of their arguments is that if we don't do this, some of our exporters may be put at a disadvantage because there are other countries. But I don't necessarily know that someone's going to switch from a GE 
engine to a Rolls Royce engine because I mean if these deals are so good, fucking private financiers would would be not they would chomp yeah yeah they'd be ready to run right in and take care of it but didn't you know isn't there there's a lot of funny math involved of course with this organization too right yeah well see once again proponents of the bank say that the loans have a very high rate of repayment a very low rate of default and that XM actually makes money and returns it to the treasury but that's not using generally accepted accounting principles. So who the fuck knows what the real situation is with that? I mean, funny math in a government program. No way. Yeah, and this is just a guaranteed bailout for them down the road if they fuck up. And they may already... I mean, who knows, dude? They could be $100 billion upside down right now and no one would really have any idea. Yeah, well, that's that's their portfolio is usually around 150 billion dollars. So, yeah. and and that's re- that's essentially what it is at the end of the day. It's a promise to do a bailout if whatever deal you're involved in goes fucking tits up. Yeah. And that kind of guarantee is worth uh, worth worth a lot of shekels, going. Yeah, it just it I would just it originally caught my eye because the politics surrounding it are so funny. I mean, Sanders is against it and I believe him. I take it at his word as at his word, but like I see people on Huffington post and like commenters on salon extolling the virtues of XM on people. It's like, wait, what? You guys only give a shit about this because the tea party came out against it and they're actually going to get a win. That's why you give a fucking shit about this. Yeah. It's so funny, you know, (laughs) it's, it's like when, uh, it's like when Obama decided to decline, um, what was it with McCain with the public financing of of his campaign? Yeah. He pledged, yeah, yeah, he was going to be Mr. Above board. I'm going to take public financing. And then when he figured out how much money he could raise, dude, that shit, it was like, yeah, we're not doing that. (laughs) Sorry. Of course, all the supporters just forget about it the next day. Oh yeah, well no, then they start you know extolling you know telling us the about the virtues of uh, why he should be taking more money from the people, how that's more democratic than public financing. Yeah. Plus, I mean, that wasn't even their real argument. If you were on their fucking shitty ass leftoid websites, it was like, well, we need to get as much money by any means possible to defeat the corporate right wing money machine. Blah blah blah. Meanwhile, <laughs> Goldman Sachs was giving him fucking. Hand over fist, shekels, yeah. yeah. Fucking to Lloyd fight Blank, money fine. Machine, we must establish our own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know Lloyd Blank, fine, and all those fucking people were in the you know best friends with Barack Obama. That's you know that's who they're tight with, and that's who is uh, largely backing Hillary Clinton um, for now. And it, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic because the same people that don't want. Trump in office or the people that don't want Bernie Sanders in office, and it's for the same reasons. Yeah, there was actually a CNBC article that said, according to FEC filings, Hillary Hillary's campaign, not PACs, but like official campaign committees, get it, hers gets far and away m- more donations from people who identify as CEOs. And the one line in the article that said, Bush's top two CEO supporters are energy company company founders, while Clinton's top donors run entertainment companies. I identify as CEO, Ken. You can't prove me wrong, even though I'm not at the top of a business. (laughs) Yeah, most of them don't even, you know, most people prefer not to. They say I'm whatever, whatever, fucking bullshit job title that doesn't mean anything, even though they run bullshit yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, they. It's funny. I remember as a basic GOP, basic bitch GOP, I was always like, "Yeah, we got to make sure that they they don't tax the one percent because, you know, it, they're going to create more jobs." It's that's bullshit. Um, for the most part, uh, the one percent is the the uh, the Jew with the you know. So yeah. it's. 
I would. I mean, really... there'd be no way to get solid numbers on this, dude. But probably fucking fifty percent of the top one percent that they're always bitching about is fucking. Right. Shit. If you just change that number from one percent to two percent, suddenly everything's just like. No way! Don't don't don't! I'm not I'm Jewish. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it, it's true. Um, and uh, yeah, when you look at those numbers that I brought up before, about 71% of Americans make less than 50000 I mean, you're, you're talking about the top 29%. Uh, what percentage of that number is, you know? The Jew. So. But yeah, it's, I remember. Uh, I am Jewish, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being, you know, back in my basic bitch days, like, yeah, we, we got to get those corporate tax rates down. We got to keep taxes low for corporations. Dude, most of the big multinational corporations are the most paused fucking entities around and are just, like, shilling for terrible shit. Yeah, no, the, yeah, the corporate, uh, what do they call it, corporate citizenship and uh, mm. where these people, where they're involved in all these, like, dildo activities and, um, you know, sp- Funneling money into PACs and getting, you know, Democrats yeah. reelected. Yeah, it's all Chamber of it's Commerce, all... open borders, fucking politically correct. Let's have more broads in the boardroom, this, that, and the other thing. It's like, fuck you. I don't give a shit about your taxes. Raise them. Oh, yeah. And look, Democrats are going to be, ag- were against super PACs. Uh, you know, they, they were for super PACs before they were against them, you know. So they, you know, they, <laughs> as soon as super PACs came out of the gate, it was, oh, this is horrible. This is unconstitutional. And then, you know, a year or two later, it, it's just business as usual. Um, and it was a really so. fucked up political situation, too. Like these big corporations could count on, you know, people like me to fight for them to have lower taxes. Meanwhile, they're engaging in all this leftoid shit. It's like, no, man, I'll leave you, your friends, your fucking friends on the left can set your tax rates. Then, then you come talk to me about how much you like that until then. Fuck yourself. 